Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. Before we join George Valentine, here's a tip for car owners. You may be wasting one out of every ten gallons of gasoline you buy due to worn spark plugs. They can also rob your engine of power and pickup. To avoid this waste... Let car savers check your spark plug soon. They'll clean them and reset the gap, or if necessary, they'll be glad to install new plugs. It takes just a few minutes to check the condition of the spark plugs in your car. So stop in tomorrow for a car saver spark plug checkup at your independent Chevron gas station or standard station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. And now, for tonight's story, The Meddler, another adventure of George Valentine. Hey, Angel, how do you spell inaccessible? I-N-A-C-C-E-S-S-I-B-L-E, I think. Mm, What? Who would... There was no one in the outer office, and I saw the door open, so I walked in. Oh, well, you might as well put those suitcases down. They must be heavy. Oh, thank you. I wish a person could put other burdens down as easily, don't you, Mr. Valentine? Uh, well, uh... I'll be coming up, Master. Oh, maybe I should have brought another container. Mr. Valentine, my name is Sally Riker, and I'm supposed to be on a bus going back to college. I'm a freshman at Laurentine. But I just had to see you. Why? Because I feel as though I'm, I'm living under a dark, heavy cloud... Just before the storm breaks. Oh, did you have breakfast, Alice? No, I could hardly think about food under the circumstances. Okay, well, here. Oh, thanks. Oh, this is Claire Brooks, my assistant. Hello. Hello. All right, now, Sally, what's this about living under a storm cloud? Well, last night I heard a shot. There was no mistaking it. But when I asked about it, everyone in the house just simply clammed up, said I'd imagined things. Even after I saw the broken glass in the French doors where the bullet hit. Uh, You mean this happened in your parents' home? Oh, no. My father's been dead ever since I was a little girl. My mother works for Mr. Mayhew. She's his secretary. And since it's such a great big house on Fairway Terrace, we, we, we all live there, too. Except now that I've grown up, Mother doesn't like me to be around there, and so she sent me to college out of town. Mayhew on Fairway Terrace. You don't mean Henry Mayhew. Of course. No wonder your mother isn't too anxious to have you live there. Oh, you're wrong about Mr. Mayhew. I know he has a, well, a rather romantic reputation, but after all, an actor... Romantic reputation? He's a middle-aged chaser. As I get it, even his wife is finally fed up with him, going to divorce him. He's a sensitive man, and people don't understand him, not even Mother. All she thinks of is business. And Mrs. Mayhew... Yeah, well, never mind, please. What happened last night? Why did you come to me? Well, I couldn't go to the police, the publicity and all. Why don't you start at the beginning? Well, I heard a shot. It sounded as though it came from Mr. Mayhew's study. I ran there, and he was just coming out. He was pale and shaken. But he said there wasn't any shot. And the broken glass? His study faces the garden. There are big French doors. One of the panes was broken. Didn't you talk to your mother? Well, that's just it. She was very upset, too, but she bawled me out for making such a fuss and said I was to go back to college immediately. So was Mrs. Mayhew there? Well, she was somewhere in the house, but I didn't speak to her. And another thing. Hmm? Earlier in the evening, I saw a man sneak away from the garden. I couldn't see him clearly, but he was a very tall man. Mr. Valentine, something... Well... Sinister is going on, and you must find out what it is. Hey, Sally, you're not worried about your mother being mixed up in all this, are you? Oh, no, of course not. She's wonderful. She couldn't do anything wrong in her life. But 
She was so happy to see me when I came home for the weekend. Happier than she's ever been. And she laughed and said maybe next summer we'd go to South America. And then after that shot, she wasn't the same person somehow. Well, now look, apparently no one was hurt. And it's not a good idea to go meddling into other people's lives. But I won't go back to school until I know I can't. Mr. Valentine, you don't have to let them know who you are. George, maybe you could. Okay, okay. You stay here with Sally, Angel. You say there's a pane of broken glass in Mr. Mayhew's study, huh? Yes. Well, I fixed a broken window once. Maybe I could fix another one. Look out below, Mr. Mayhew. What? Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Sure funny how high up this glass was broken. Good nine, ten feet. Uh, kids broke it with a baseball, maybe, huh? That's right. Uh, kids. Oh, sure. Do it every time. Now, I'll get down and tackle this thing from the terrace side again. My, my. Sure a beautiful place you have here. Beautiful place. A home where love dwells. Uh, yeah, well, I'd, I'd better sweep some of the glass away. Don't want to hurt this rug. Yes, of course. Gee, I hate to see nice things spoiled. Like this chair near the desk, Mr. Mayhew. That uh, burn along the back. <laughs> Must have been a little careless with the cigarette, eh, Mr. Mayhew? What? Oh, <laughs> yes. Yes, that's what it must have been, a, a cigarette. Yeah. Oh, gosh, wait till I tell people where I've been today. I know a girl says you're the most romantic man on the stage. Oh, I am a great lover. I understand women perfectly. <laughs> Wish I could. Here you are, Mr. Mayhew. I'm sorry, but I had to wait a few minutes for the druggist to make them up. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Riker. Henry, I... Oh, that's all right, my dear. The man to fix the broken glass. I see. Oh, good afternoon, ma'am. I'll just put these in the bathroom. Don't want to risk having a sleepless night. Gosh, lady, you don't know what it means for me to be in Mr. Mayhew's house. Uh, you work for him, huh, secretary? Uh, say, is it true that his missus is going to divorce him? Guess she found out something she shouldn't have, huh? She's not so pure herself. But suppose you do a little more work and a little less talking. Oh, well, I'm not butting in now, lady. Just curious, you understand. And, uh, say, when I was out in the garden, right there on the terrace, I, I found this little ghoul thing. Mm. Phi Beta Kappa Key. Belong to somebody in this house? Honorary Scholastic Society? <laughs> Hardly. Oh. Well, I'll find out who it belongs to and see if I can return it. Mrs. Riker? Yes, sir? If Mrs. Mayhew condescends to leave her room, tell her I want to talk to her about her favorite subject, honor. Honor is like that glossy bubble that finds philosophers such trouble. Whose least part cracked, the whole doth fly, and wits are cracked to find out why. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Million stop ways! It! Well, who understands women? I told you before, I do. <laughs> That's why I'm the happiest man in the world. My, sure drove off in a temper. Young man, how did you know about the broken glass here? Who called you, hmm? Not that it makes any difference. <laughs> well, if it doesn't make any difference, why answer? Who knows about men, either? That was very nice of you, Mr. Valentine, to go to all the trouble to return this key to me. Oh, I knew it must have meant a great deal to you, Mr. Dwight. People say someday soon you'll be giving up your law practice and running for Congress. <laughs> I'll finally have a friend in high places. Well, thanks again. Yeah. That's a funny the way I found this thing. I, I just happened to be visiting the Henry Mayhew home and the uh, key was in their garden. Who? Oh, you must be mistaken where you found it, Mr. Valentine. No, no, no. That's where it was, Mr. Dwight. I tell you, it's impossible. I don't know the Mayhews and never met them. Besides, someone saw a tall man, as tall as you, out there only last night. Get out of my office. Okay, friend. Take it easy. You're not just someone who happened to find this. How did you trace this key to me anyway? Saw your name on it? Check with the Alumni Association? Oh, spoken like a detective. 
Well, go back to whoever hired you. Hired me? Tell him you were as unsuccessful as the others have been. Because there's nothing to find out. Now I said get out. Oh, easy. And I said relax. Why? Why? I know. You're a lawyer. You'll sue me. So long, Buster. Mr. Valentine, I told you I don't know this Mr. Dwight. And as long as no one was hurt by what you say happened here last night, I see no reason for you to go on meddling. No, neither do I, Mrs. Mayhew, but I think it's your business to listen to what I have to say first. Really? Well, I'm sorry Sally Riker went to you. She's too imaginative. She romanticizes things. Mm, maybe. But if you want to hear my opinion, I think your husband tried to kill himself last night. Oh. <laughs> oh I say the most comical <laughs> yes. things. You don't know how comical. You forget I've been married to Henry for a long, long time. And? And I know he would never hurt a hair on his head. He loves himself too much. He's too vain. He's too selfish. Uh Uh-huh. Well, he seems to be taking your leaving him very hard. Mr. Valentine, I know he has a fatal charm for women, but not for me any longer. There. Simple enough? In other words, you don't care. Come on, he's in his study. Let's ask him. Well, I don't think putting it to him as bluntly as this... Oh, my is... husband is a very strong person, really. Henry? Yes? What are you doing back here, young man? He's sort of a private detective, Henry. What? You've had dealings with private detectives before. Don't be shocked. But why would a private detective... His name would... is George Valentine. And he thinks you tried to kill yourself last night. He... <laughs> well, that's silly... It's not true at all. Mr. Valentine says he has some proof for his statement. Uh, What is that proof, Mr. Valentine? Well, where the bullet hit so high up. If anyone shot at you or if you shot at anyone else, it would never be that high. Not even an amateur would have such bad aim. Uh, that, That doesn't prove anything. Well, is that chair? You were sitting in it. The bullet from the gun you held left that burn. You, uh, you lost your nerve at the last minute. I even think I could find a gun somewhere in this house. Of course, there's a gun. I I was cleaning it last night and uh, (laughs) held it just the way you described. And accidentally, it went off. Uh Uh-huh. That explanation seems logical, Mr. Valentine. The whole matter can be considered quite closed now, can't it? (sighs) Yeah, I guess so. Okay, I'm a meddler and I'll get out. But if you don't mind, I'm going to check with Mrs. Riker on who to believe and what to believe in this thing. Oh, excuse me. Yes, hello. Yes, this is Mr. Mayhew. State police? What? No. Oh, no. All right. Oh, what is it, Henry? What happened? Lillian. Lillian Riker. She's had an accident. A car swerved off the road and crashed into a ravine. She's dead. In just a moment, we'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. With colder weather here, you've probably already taken steps to protect your car during the frosty days ahead. But did you know that you can buy a gasoline that is also designed for winter driving? One of Chevron Supreme's all eight high-performance qualities is area blending, which means that Chevron Supreme is specially blended for every climate and area. The Chevron Supreme you buy in Los Angeles, for instance is refined differently from that which you buy in the Rocky Mountain area or the San Francisco Bay region. For Chevron Supreme, gasoline is always right for the kind of driving you do where you do it. And that's just one of the all eight necessary high-performance qualities in every gallon. In addition, you get mileage, power, anti-knock, vapor lock prevention, starting, warm-up, and acceleration. So for top, all-round driving pleasure, wherever you drive in the West, just remember to fill her up with the gasoline that gives you all eight. Chevron Supreme gasoline at standard stations 
or independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. A highly excited 17-year-old girl bursts into your office. I feel as though I'm living under a dark, heavy cloud just before the storm breaks. I know my mother isn't mixed up in any of this because she's wonderful. She couldn't do anything wrong in her life. But you must help me. Well, you've just about convinced yourself that all there is behind the storm cloud is the attempted suicide of a man who also likes to dramatize himself. The aging matinee idol, Henry Mayhew, whose cynical wife is finally leaving him. Of course, the girl's mother could help to explain all this, but now she's been killed in an automobile accident. Well, if your name is George Valentine, you know there's need for more meddling in this case. I went down to identify her. It was Lillian, all right. And she's gone. What sent her out of here like a bolt anyway, Mr. Mayhew? She was my strong right arm. Took care of me all these years. (laughs) Helped me out of scrapes so my wife wouldn't know. You didn't answer my question. Huh? Oh, I don't know. I suppose she was upset over the, the way I've been acting. She told me to snap out of it. That I had to snap out of it. I guess she was impatient with me. But I never I thought... see. What do you intend to do now, Mr. Mayhew? What can I do? Maybe it's some sort of poetic justice. I haven't been exactly a, a model man or husband, Mr. Valentine. Besides, a man can only fight up to a certain point. You don't still have any fancy ideas left, do you, Mr. Mayhew? I don't know what you're talking about. By the by, I've invited Philip Dwight to come over here this afternoon. Dwight? Do you know him? (laughs) Not exactly, but I think I should. Yes, I think I should meet him once. You know, there's something that's been bothering me, Mr. Mayhew. Both Philip Dwight and Mrs. Mayhew have made some cracks about private detectives. Now, what were they driving at? I don't know. Anyway, all that is unimportant now. That's all in the past. Oh, stay where you are, Mr. Valentine. I'll see who it is. <laughs> Honor is like that glossy bubble that finds philosophers such trouble. <laughs> oh, George. Yeah, Brooksy. I came out as fast as I could. Well, where's Sally? The poor kid must be half crazy after she learned about her mother. She's a pretty wonderful girl and brave. I left her with a state police lieutenant. Well, what about that accident? Not a single thing to show that it wasn't just that. Apparently, Mrs. Riker was driving too fast and lost control of her car. Ah. She sure took off here in a great big hurry. Hey, what's going on out here? I came in with a tall, distinguished-looking gentleman. You did. That'll be Mr. Dwight. Come on, Brooksy. Let's find him before Mr. Mayhew gets cute again. There, in there. That's Mr. Dwight. And that's Mrs. Mayhew, isn't it? Yeah, just the two of them. I thought there might have been some bloodshed. Well, they're doing some pretty fast talking for two people who are not supposed to know each other. Watch this. See what I mean? Come on. Well, we meet again, Mr. Dwight. Yeah. Mrs. Mayhew, this is my assistant, Miss Brooks. Mrs. Mayhew. I had the uh, slight feeling that this was supposed to be some sort of showdown or noble renunciation or something. Where's Mr. Mayhew? I don't know. He told me to come in here, that he'd be back in a few minutes. Why? I think we'd better find him. Henry? I don't know where he could have gone. And I certainly don't see the need for all the excitement. It's a big house, Mrs. Mayhew. We'd better keep looking. Look, George, on the night table. A note. Let me have it, please. Dear Rhoda... Forgive me for all the heartache I have caused you in the past. But I still can't let you go unless I go first. This time, I won't miss love. Henry. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, he'd never kill himself, I tell you. He wouldn't. Come on. A 
Okay, this box, almost empty. What is this? You take medicine or something? Sleeping pills. Take only as directed. Uh, what's beyond this bathroom? Oh, just a little dressing room. It, it leads nowhere. Henry! Don't come near any of you. Don't be a fool, May. You put that gun down. And Phil. Yes, this is the gun you were looking for, Mr. Valentine. I didn't have the courage to shoot myself last night at the last minute. But this way is simple. I'll phone for Dr. George. Stay where you are. I don't want to be rescued. It'll all be over in a minute. There were ten pills in that pack. Henry, Henry, please. No. No, it's too late. Better this way. You must listen to me. I want to explain oh, something better, to you. Better this way. Oh, Philip. Philip. Rosa, uh, darling, please. <laughs> Brooksy, get that doctor. Hurry. Doctor, oh, sleeping oh, tablets. Please, Please, as soon as you can. <laughs> oh, that's a fine thing. Oh, I can't help crying, Philip. I know we shouldn't have met the way we did secretly and stealthily. Oh, now, now, don't blame yourself. <laughs> Please. Please. But I knew what he would have done with his love for scandal. And I didn't want you to get hurt. Your career. Oh, no, we didn't do anything wrong. You I've had enough it. of that. <laughs> so you finally succeeded, you poor sap. The stupid way out. <laughs> Big romance. Only this was a pretty fancy death, even for a character like you. Too fancy. And why you did it before me, a stranger. Unless you wanted a witness. Do you hear me, Mayhew? <laughs> of course I hear you. Well, let them go on. Listen, let them dig their own graves. Let them keep talking. <laughs> Detectives could never find out anything like that. Get up off that bed, you no, old driving pony. Throw them out. Get up here. Get What's going on in this? What's the matter? Ah. Mr. May. Welcome, mourners. Come in, join the party. Yeah, it's him, all right. Back from the dead. <laughs> Even the devil won't take me. You were always so right, Rhoda. It took quite a build-up to make you believe in my death, didn't it? Uh, what is that? George, what's going on? That suicide note. Those pills. Harmless, bad-tasting imitations, Counselor. I'm afraid they only look like my regular sleeping tablets. The druggist did a good job, didn't he? Now, shall we talk about the divorce? Divorce? You mean all this was just but you to... two have been so discreet, my dear. Oh. And with my reputation, it isn't easy for me to plead injury, for me to be the aggrieved party. <laughs> I'll show you what a plead Watch injury it, Mr. is. Now let him go. Give the witnesses even more to testify about. <laughs> <laughs> you two just don't seem to understand yet, that's all. Rhoda, I'm going to divorce you. And of course, if the word alimony is mentioned even once... George, if you don't kill that man, I'm going to. You staged all this just to save yourself some money. I uh, see. A ticket to South America. And a delightful blonde showgirl waiting for me there who would be much too expensive for me to afford otherwise, don't you think? Oh, Buster. You don't think I would use my talent as an actor just for love, do you? Do you? What's the matter? You want an answer to that? No. Oh. I mean, of course it's money. To save money. To get my grounds for divorce. On that ridiculous wife... Money. George? Now, leave me alone, all of you. What more do you... What more... Mr. Valentine, come here. I said leave me... <laughs> Dead? Of course he's dead. Casey, that's not what I asked well, you. Well, poison, what do you think? But he said those pills of his were harmless. They wouldn't hurt a fly. Look, Valentine, Valentine, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a magician. I don't know who switched his medicine around. I don't know who took advantage of a, of a silly suicide to make a perfect murder. death must have been murder, too. Skipper, will you? I'm calling from the office, and I got some visitors coming in. But what did Lieutenant Johnson say? If somebody switched Mayhew's pills on him so he took real ones... Brooksy, he... please, wait. We've already got all the facts we need. Yeah. Now, just do what I say and take Sally back to your place fast. And don't let her talk to anybody, either. See you later, Angel. Hello, Mr. Valentine. 
on time. Uh, yes, yes, we got your message. We got here as soon as we could. Yeah, hello. Well, uh, sit down. Make yourselves comfortable. Oh, Mr. Valentine, please. You told me on the phone you knew who killed my husband. Don't you? Well, I Mr. don't... Mr. Dwight, you're an attorney. You have a clear, logical mind. Examine the evidence. Well, I'm afraid I don't quite understand. Well, the date on that box he took the pills from was today. Well... We checked up and found that nobody else had delivered any packages to the house. I don't understand. Well, I was out there when his secretary, Mrs. Riker, brought in a package for him. From the drugstore, too. That must have been the pills. You mean she was in on it with him? I mean more than that. I mean she murdered him. What? Yes, yes. It's quite a mess, isn't it? All the police checked up on the drugstore. They confirmed it, too. And nobody ever bought any phony pills. She always did everything he told her to. Yeah, and there's her fingerprints on them and everything else. It ties in with what both of them said. He sent her to get some phonies for his little act. And then she brought him real ones instead. Not that I blame her. But why? Why would she... Sally told me her mother was so businesslike, so calm and reserved. Oh. Yeah. In love with him, wasn't she? Just like every other woman he ever met. He treated her miserably. Did he? When Sally even told me her mother thought she was going to South America... And the police said she told several other people, too? She thought Mayhew was going to take her with him? Well, she agreed to help your husband with this lousy act of his, just so he could marry her. And then she found he had only one ticket to South America. I remember she was all upset last night. However, do you really think her accident was an accident? All I know is she just left the house after handing the man the stuff to really kill himself with. Her perfect way of getting even. And so... That's it. Oh, no. No, it's not. Sit down, please. What? Well, I, I just finished a selling job on Lieutenant Johnson. Now I'm going to do one on you. I don't think it'll be too difficult. But this time, I'm really going to meddle for good. If you aren't already using new RPM, the motor oil that was developed through atomic energy, then you're not using the oil that doubles engine life. Yes, compared with premium-type motor oils, as designated by the American Petroleum Institute, new RPM motor oil doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication, more than meets the heavy-duty requirements of all car manufacturers. Get new RPM for your car at independent Chevron gas stations or standard stations, where they say and mean we take better care of your car. It's horrible, isn't it? My mother's accident. But it's one of those things you can't help, can you? No, well, that's right, Sally. I can only hope that I can go on and someday make her as proud of me as I've been proud of her. Your dinner's ready, Sally. Do you want to run downstairs? Oh, all right, yes, thanks. You've both been so nice to me. Mr. Mayhew used to be very nice to me, too. I told you he was a fine, sensitive man. But he just couldn't stand living alone and... Unwanted, could he? Well, Mayhew was just weak, I guess. That's why he killed himself. Mm. Are you coming down, Miss Brooks? In just a minute, dear. Accident. Suicide. So that's what you've been up to. Well, why not? He left a note, didn't he? Now, does that kid have to know her mother was... No, no. Of course, I understand. Everybody else bought it. They're all with us. With Sally, you mean? Oh, George. Sometimes I wish you could know how I really feel about you. Oh, now, take it easy, Angel. I don't want a medal. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey has starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Kenneth Webb. Larry Dobkin was heard as Mayhew, Frank Hale as Mrs. Mayhew, Stephen Chase as Dwight, and Gene Bates as Sally. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. 
Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.